Many of you are concerned about the authenticity of Ishin teapot. When you buy an Ishin teapot, you want to make sure it is authentic and not fake. In this video, I will tell you three ways of faking an Ishin teapot you must know to make the right choice. Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nanoshan, where we share the pleasure of drinking and discovering genuine farm tea. Today we are going to speak about Ishing teapot and if you are new to our channel and you look forward to see more video like this, please go ahead and subscribe our channel. And if you enjoy watching, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. We say we want to speak about Ishin Teapot and this video will go into the Teaware playlist where you find also other videos about Ishin Teapot. So if you are interested, go in, the, in, the, in that um, playlist and you will find also videos about Gaiwan and other Teaware in general. Moreover, actually, you will find specifically about Ishin Teapot some videos that are pretty advanced uh, and for experts, like for example, the one that we made where we compare a Juni clay with a honey clay and telling you how to distinguish the two clay from each other that look similar but have different value. And um, <clears throat> in uh, this video today actually is more uh, for beginners. So it is basically meant for those of you that uh, have just entered into the world of Gonfu tea and that are looking forward to buy their first Ishin teapot and don't want to do mistakes. But actually, those of you that have already some Ishin teapot at home but are not 100% sure if they are authentic or not, well, you also want to stick on the screen because you might find out by the end of this video if they are authentic or not. So, let's get started. The first uh, um, faking method is to fake the clay. So, what do I mean by that? I mean that uh, if the clay is not done with an authentic Ishi clay that comes from the mine the mines on uh, Huanglong Mountain or all other mountains around Yixing from which uh, in which uh, there are the, the mines of the Yixing clay, then you are not buying an Yixing teapot but you are buying a teapot made with another clay, which is not bad, not necessarily bad, but you don't want to spend the money that uh, usually goes into an Yixing teapot for an ordinary clay, for example made with uh, standard uh, terracotta or with another standard earthenware. Even worse if the, if the clay is actually a chemical clay. What do I mean by that with chemical? I mean that the clay has been added to the clay, has been added the, uh, chemical pigments to resemble the color of an original teapot. Now, as a matter of fact, this process is not very well done and most of the time they result in very weird colors. For example, if you see a teapot that is bright uh, uh, green, glossy green or uh, uh, blue and is a little bit strange uh, in that color, you want to make sure, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, to keep distance basically. But um, it doesn't mean that uh, Ishing clay, green and azure do not exist. There are some, but they are extremely rare. So if you find a blue or a green Ishin teapot or some other strange color, you can be almost 100% sure it is uh, fake. And if it is a real one, it has to cost a lot of money because those those Ishin clay are very, very rare. So we are moving in the four digit price tag. All right. So uh, look if you see some strange color, if the, the color is a little bit artificial and keep distance for, from those. Another. Said the second way, another way of faking a niche in teapot is fake craftsmanship. So, what do I mean with that? I mean actually the fake production method. A niche in teapot is traditionally done according to two methods. Either it is completely handmade according to the slab building process, or it is semi handmade by using steel slabs of material that are put in a mold to shape. Now, uh, you have other ways that you can do easier way uh, that you can use to do an Ishin teapot uh, or a teapot actually not an Ishin one. One is to use a potter wheel. So you put your piece of clay on a potter wheel, you turn it and uh, you shape it like that. Or even worse you could actually uh, use a cast. So you can use liquid clay and put liquid clay in a form, in a cast and shape it that way. This is really bad because also the material will be very poor quality. So it brings us to the first, even to the first method. So usually fake craftsmanship when it is actually a casted 
pot instead of a slab built, bring back also to a fake clay. So, how to distinguish them? Well, distinguishing and when a, a teapot was made in a cast is not too difficult because, uh, uh, first of all, the, the material is, uh, uh, is of poor quality and uh, uh, also you usually have a very smooth surface both on the outside and on the inside because it was liquid when it was put in the form. While an ishing teapot on the inside is not smooth. Uh, when you look at the potter wheel, it is a little bit trickier, but it's definitely possible to uh, distinguish uh, um, a teapot that was made on a potter wheel from a teapot that was made out of slabs. So if you look at your teapot, you want to look inside of it and inside you see uh, some lines. Now, what do I mean with that? I mean that if um, it is made uh, on a potter wheel, the lines on the side are circular and they're very straight. If it is made with a slab, there might be some lines as well, but are of different kinds. So, for example, if in this teapot I look at the bottom here, I see some lines and they are actually on the bottom going outwards like this, like radial lines. And this is because the, the bottom of the pot was made with a slab and then was heated by some uh, wood while was rotating and was hidden and so you get this um, this uh, uh, radial like like a sun basically radial rays on this side here uh, I see also some uh, uh, some lines but uh, they are um, they are also circular but they are not very straight so when a pot is rotating very quickly and you put your finger inside you obtain some lines that are very linear and straight while if uh, uh, you uh, take a slab of material and then you bring it to shape, you re there are also um, results in some, in some lines, but the lines are of different types. So they are like uh, wrinkles on the inside, so there is a roughness to it, and some lines that comes because you have taken something flat and you have turned it, and so you get some wrinkles on it. All right, so in generally speaking, you don't want to look for perfection. So it is a handmade product and uh, you want to accept actually that it has some uh, imperfections maybe that make that teapot unique. A third way of faking an ishing teapot is a fake producer. What do I mean by that? Uh, actually, you might know that uh, in ishing, artists have different rankings. So there are artists that are uh, um, very well known, they have a high ranking and they sell their teapot at a very, very high price, other that are a little bit less known. Now, that doesn't tell you anything about the quality of the material. So if an artist is famous or not, if he has used bad material, bad clay, that teapot won't render very well your tea no matter how nice it looks and how famous was the artist. So the first thing and most important for you is the clay. You want to have very good clay. Now, of course, famous artists tend to have also good resources of good clay, but uh, less famous artists also might have good material if they just have good sources or they pay for it. So that's not the criteria. Uh, just to make you an example, actually, I, uh, we have one of our uh, artists from which we source Ishin Teapot. She's fairly well known, I have a good ranking, so the teapots are not so cheap, but um, her husband actually is even more famous and has a higher ranking. Now, both the um, wife and the husband, they both use the same type of material because they are one family and they use exactly the same clay but uh, the teapot made from, uh, the, um, uh, from the woman cost 10 times less than the one made uh, from, uh, by her husband. And uh, uh, this is just because they are famous. So guess which one we buy? We buy for us those made by the lady because the material is exactly the same and they cost less. They, they don't cost uh, very little, actually. In fact, uh, we have one teapot from this artist on our website and it's the most expensive teapot we have. But those teapots made from by his, uh, her husband would cost 10 times more, so it would cost several thousands of euros. So, what I want to say with that? I want to say you don't want to pursue the artist's name. You want to search for a specific artist only if you know 
exactly which characteristic of the craftsmanship of that artist make the teapot unique and if you can really appreciate those characteristics. If you do, do not, then look only for very good clay and forget about how famous was the artist. On the other side, if uh, uh, a teapot is made from a specific artist, you want to make sure it is really true. So the best way, of course, if you can travel to Ishing, they made the teapot in front of you and then you take it home. You have to stay there for several days if you get this opportunity, even better. But otherwise, if you buy from a seller, you want to try to understand if the seller were, was in contact, in direct contact with the artist. And you can ask questions to the seller to understand that. You can see on their website if they have blog, what they write, which photos they have, if they can, in a way, prove that they have been in contact with the artist and they bought directly from the artist. And of course, sometime on the YouTube channel, you can see also some uh, uh, reports done from uh, visits uh, uh, in Ishin that can help. All right, so what we've seen today, we've seen three different ways of faking an Ishin teapot, fake clay, fake craftsmanship, and fake producer. You want to remember these three, and you want to make sure that the Ishin, Ishin teapot you buy is an authentic one. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed watching, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And if it is the first time that you are here, don't forget to subscribe our channel and more videos like this will come your way very soon. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.